Hey guys, time for something with some sentimental value to me. The Core 2 Duo E6750. The very same CPU and the first PC I bought myself about a decade ago. The Core 2 Duo E6750 released in Q3 of 2007 and is a dual core CPU with no high performing support on the LGA775 socket. It runs at 2.66 GHz from the factory and uses the 65 nanometer fabrication process. Based on the kernel architecture, it features 291 million transistors, 4 MB of L2 cache, a 1333 MHz frontside bus, and no turbo boosting whatsoever, all with a TDP of 65 watts. Its release price in the US was $183, which when adjusted for inflation is around $220 today, or £157 or €178. Euros. Nowadays though, you can pick this up for as little as 25 pence, or 35 US cents, or 28 euro cents. The benchmarks we're going to be running today, as usual, are Cinebench R15 and SuperPi 1 million, with the games we're going to be running being Fallout 4, GT5, Tomb Raider, and Crisis 3. All of the benchmarks and games will be tested with the Core 2 Duo at its stock speeds and with an overclock as well. The rest of the system we'll be featuring today includes 6GB of DDR2 RAM at 800MHz, a GTX 1080 from my personal system, Windows 7 Ultimate 64 bit and the Fantex TC14PE to keep the E6750 cool. First up is Cinebench R15, benchmark designed to utilise your processor's power to render a photorealistic 3D scene. This ran relatively quickly, at least compared to the Celeron D430 I tested in a previous video, which took about 25 minutes to complete. The E6750 however still took just over 5 minutes to complete though, so let's speed it up a bit. After the benchmark had finished, the Core 2 Duo E6750 managed a score of 133, but went overclocked to 3.6GHz, which required about 1.44V, with a memory frequency of 1080MHz, it managed a score of 181, 36.1% faster than stock. Next up is SuperPi 1 million, a benchmark which calculates Pi to 1 million decimal places, but only uses one CPU core, so it's a good way of testing your CPU's performance in single-threaded applications. Across 10 runs at its stock speed, the fastest time the Core 2 Duo managed was 19.578 seconds. For its overclocked runs though, I had to downclock the E6750 to 3.56 GHz, which gave a new RAM frequency of 1068 MHz, because the RAM just wasn't stable enough with the CPU at 3.6 and across 10 runs it managed the fastest time of 14.578 seconds, a whole 5 second reduction over the stock clock. Time for the first of our games today, Fallout 4, which will be running at 1080p on the lowest settings with VSync disabled through a third party launcher. Fallout 4 released worldwide on 10th of November 2015 on PC, PS4 and Xbox One, and is set in the post-apocalyptic aftermath of a nuclear fallout in which you are the sole survivor from Vault 111 and its stock speeds of 2.66GHz and RAM at 800MHz, the game was pretty unplayable, with constant stutter throughout the entire gameplay session. The game also constantly locks up, and often dips below 20 frames per second, making for some pretty jarring gaming. Across a 30 minute fraps benchmark, the Core 2 Duo E6750 managed an average of 49 frames per second, with 1% and 0.1% lows of 14 and 5 frames per second respectively and overclocked to 3.4 GHz with RAM frequencies of 1018 MHz. The game was immediately smoother with less stuttering and managed an average of 57 frames per second but with 1% and 0.1% lows of 19 and 5 frames per second respectively, meaning that overall it's still a reasonably unplayable experience. Now it's on to GTA 5 which we will be running at 1080p on the lowest settings. GTA 5 released on 17th of September 2013 on Xbox 360 and PS3, 18th of November 2014 for PS4 and Xbox One, 
and 14th of April 2015 on PC. GTA 5 is centred on the lives of Michael, Trevor and Franklin and is set in the fictional state of San Andreas, which is based on Southern California. This is another game that doesn't perform particularly well on the E6750, with major stuttering, constant dips below 30 frames per second and occasional input lag being the issues that you will experience. The game in this state is pretty unplayable and not enjoyable at all. When overclocked to 3.4GHz however, the game did perform a bit better. It was still stuttery, but it did become almost playable and enjoyable. Across a 30 minute fraps benchmark, the game averaged 32 frames per second, with 1% and 0.1% lows of 12 and 5 frames per second respectively. And at 3.4GHz, it managed an average of 49 frames per second, with 1% and 0.1% lows of 22 and 5 frames per second respectively. Despite the performance increase, I wouldn't recommend the E6750 for Grand Theft Auto 5 at all though. Next up is Crisis 3, which we will be running at 1080p on the lowest settings. Crisis 3 released on PC on the 18th of February in the US, and a few days later in the UK. Unfortunately, Fraps wouldn't display in this game, so I can't bring you the performance from a Fraps benchmark. But I can tell you, however, that indoors the game runs extremely smooth, and is actually quite enjoyable to play with dips close to 30 FPS during more intense scenes, making it a reasonable experience on the E6750 as stock. Going outdoors, however, into areas with a lot of grass for example, the performance tanks pretty badly. The FPS in this scene gets down to nearly 20 and is a pretty horrible experience. And this is when overclocked to 3.4GHz as well, showing just how much the CPU holds back this game in highly intense scenes so I can't really recommend the E6750 for this game either, due to the outdoor performance. Lastly, it's Tomb Raider, a game released in 2013 on the 5th of March for PC, Xbox 360 and PS3, and on 23rd of January 2014 for Mac, and 27th of April 2016 for Linux. Based on Lara Croft, this game takes her back to her origins as we discover how she became the Tomb Raider. This game ran extremely well. So well in fact that I was able to turn up the settings to Ultra at 1080p. Even at stock speeds the E6750 performed great in this game which ran quite smoothly, with only occasional stutter and small dips under 30 FPS, which didn't really interfere with the gameplay at all. Across a 30 minute fraps benchmark, the E6750 averaged 46 frames per second, with 1% and 0.1% lows of 22 and 13 frames per second respectively. When overclocked to 3.4GHz, the game had no stutter whatsoever and was an extremely enjoyable experience, which the 30 minute fraps benchmark shows, with an average of 94 frames per second and 1% and 0.1% lows of 48 and 29 frames per second respectively. Overall, it was quite nice looking back at the first CPU I ever owned myself, but for more demanding games, the Core 2 Duo E6750 isn't a particularly great choice for games these days. It can however play older games, or less intensive games, with relative ease. It's also extremely easy to overclock as well, with the speeds I ran the games at being around 800MHz over the standard speed. For general tasks such as browsing the internet, watching YouTube videos and writing documents etc, the E6750 would be a great choice, as it still offers great performance in these areas and it only costs 25 pence, so it's an absolute bargain as well. If you liked this video at all, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. Hopefully you tune into the next one too.